What's going on guys, Snag here and it's time to wrap up round 3 of the 2024 NRL season and what a round it was man, we had some cracking games, a couple massive upsets, we had the Doggies winning, we had the Tigers winning, absolutely crazy guys and the thing I'm most excited about in this video is I actually get to talk positively about the Bulldogs and the Tigers because they're both brilliant man, so absolutely stoked. And cannot wait. Now, I just want a quick, uh, quick question for you guys. Um, I was thinking about breaking these videos down into like three or four um, sort of videos. So, like after each game, like so. I'd like to know from you guys: Would you rather one big video like dropped on the Monday or Sunday night? That Monday morning, Sunday night, or would you rather shorter games? Because like maybe you don't care about the, this game, but you really want to know about this game or something like that. So drop that in the comments, guys. I'm happy to do whatever. It's sort of obviously I'd want it to be a better watching and listening experience, guys. So let me know if you'd rather the short, sort of four short videos or one big long one at the at the end, <clears throat> sort of thing. That'd be really good, guys. So we'll go through the results and have a look at the ladder. Bron uh, Panthers get it done against the Broncos, 34 to 12. Warriors get it done against the Raiders. Must win game, 18 to 10. Roosters absolutely hump the Bunnies, 48 to 6. Bulldogs beat the Titans, 32 zip. Cowboys get it done against the Dragons, 46 to 24. West Tigers defeat the Sharks, 32 to 6. Parramatta get home just against the Sea Eagles, and the Knights scrape home against the Melbourne Storm. And we know, we know. The older uh, Dolphins had a buy. Now, we went in our tipping, we went six from eight, guys. Um, we obviously got the Titans wrong, and we got which other? Oh, Sharks wrong, of course. No, I got, the, I got the Titans right. Hang on. Oh, so we got the Bulldogs right. Oh, that's right. We we tipped uh, Bloody Sea Eagles there. So there was a bit of dodgy obstruction call there. We'll get to that, but well, not dodgy. I don't think it was dodgy, um, but we'll talk about it. Everyone else seems to think it's dodgy sort of thing, but yeah, so two from uh, six from. From eight guys, so not too bad. I would have loved at least a seven in that one, but anyway. All right, so Cowboys only undefeated team three and oh. Got the got the Broncos next weekend at Suncorp. I'll be at that game. I got myself a corporate box for that one. I'm absolutely amped. Cannot wait. Um, Roosters. So everyone else. So everyone else here down has four points. So we've got the Roosters, Raiders, Panthers, Sea Eagles, Eels, Dolphins, Storm, and the West Tigers. West Tigers technically only have one win, but. Um, and then the Sharkies too, and then everyone else on one. One win or no win. So we have the Warriors, Bulldogs, uh, Knights, Broncos, Dragons, Titans, and Rabbitohs. Man, poor old Titans. It's not looking good. Not looking good. And obviously you can look at the side here, guys. This is who everyone's playing next week. Um, how do two teams have a buy? That doesn't make... Oh, that buy hasn't come off yet. Uh, so yeah, the Storm will have a buy next week. And that will reset to someone else. All right, <sighs> Broncos Storm. This was, I mean, we'll, like I've said, we were a little robbed in this game. Um, obviously, um, you know, no Payne Haas, no, no Reynolds and no Fisher Harris. I was really looking forward to that. Um, love watching all those three guys play. And then Reese Walsh obviously got his face caved in. What was it, four or five minutes in sort of thing? So a um, little bit robbed here, guys. Um, but just off the bat, I mean... We'll have, a, we'll have a look at some of the stats in a minute, but Broncos are going to be just fine. They're going to win heaps of games. They're just going through. They didn't really go through this last year. They had a really nice run with injuries and stuff like this, but pretty much every team normally deals with just a bunch of injuries at the same time and sometimes to key players, and um, it's just Broncos' turn. Um, I'm not worried about them in the sense that they're not going to win many rugby league games this year. They will. <laughs> they will. Trust me. Um, but I am one thing I was a little concerned about, and I'll just get this out of the way first. Is I said this in my on my TikTok. Make sure you follow us there too, guys. I do a lot more content on there, shorter ones. Make sure you're subscribed here too, lads. Come on, man. Come on. Um, so, for example, I mean Melbourne just lost tonight, but a bit of a bad example. But Melbourne the last two weeks, no Munster, no Nas. They still look like Melbourne. You know, Penrith. They can have five or six State of Origin players out. They still look like Penrith. Broncos didn't look very Broncos to me, um, like I said, but it was some individual brilliance. I thought, you know, there's some players there that were really nice, but um, it just didn't quite look like the Broncos to me. So hopefully, for their sake, they can keep everyone on the park because, 
yeah, when you're just trying to play hero ball there, it can get a bit dicey. But they, they were good, man. They were good. So man of the match for this one for me was Tungle. Jesus Christ, man. He's an absolute freak. Um, just on the head clash, I mean, look, it, it was a head clash. Like, I, everyone that was saying he did it on purpose has never had a head clash before. You never go into a, a tackle like that. <laughs> Anyone that's had a head clash knows that You'd rather, put it this way, I'd rather slice my plums and dip them into a bag of salt and vinegar chips than have a head clash. It hurts so much. The first time I got a proper head clash like that, full speed, this I hit the ground, Tweety Birds, not knocked out, just Tweety Birds, and all that ran through my head on a loop was, I never want to play rugby league again. I never want to play rugby league again. It hurts so much. If you actually look at it too, Tungle actually sort of goes half pull out. But Tungo's chin's up and his arms are down. What's what's the two rules of boxing? Chin down, hands up. Like he was actually in a worse position than Reese Walsh. It just it was one of those ones where it just tagged him right under the eye and it swelled swelled up. But honestly, that could have easily been Tungo knocked out and Tungo going, um, Tungo off the off the park. But it was just oh not Tungo May, um, but yeah, it was just it was just really unlucky and unfortunate. But that's that's what happens in a rugby league in um in a contact game, you know, like. You know, UFC, you're not allowed to kick in the nuts. Happens every card. <laughs> happens every card. It's just it's what happens when we're throwing our limbs around trying to hit each other, you know. Um, but, yeah, it was good. I really enjoyed the Stag May battle. Um, that was really good. Um, now, just I'll get to the Bronco. Just finish off with the, the negatives, sort of. Well, I've sort of said the positives, but the negatives. I really don't like Fletcher Baker. Um, I'm not feeling him at all. I said this before he came to the club, you know, that... Um, Flegler was leaving and I sort of said um, and everyone's like yeah but we're getting Fletcher Baker he's a gun I wasn't sold on it just because I, Roosters had three props out last year maybe four and he was still getting 15 to 20 minute games and looked very average when he was on if he was good he would have been getting minutes at the Roosters just just straight up like they had three props out at one point last year you know Lindsay Collins um who was who else was out? Lindsay Collins, JWH, and someone else. And there was this like they had they had the Baker brothers playing in the front row who were not big boys. I was like, and then Fletcher Baker's getting these little minutes. Um, so yeah, I'm not. And they had Tupanua and stuff as well, like skinny ganglia guys. So he had a couple errors. Didn't look nice. Got absolutely like Nathan Cleary dusted him. Like that that happens. But the um, the problem with it is the time when it happened. He dusted him within 15 minutes. Like it was, it was probably 10 minutes into the game. He just went dang bang. And like, if you're a front rower, you shouldn't be getting fended off within 10 minutes of a game by a, by a halfback. You should be clobbering them. So to me, Fletcher Baker's not him. I have no idea why he was on and Xavier wasn't. Xavier got handled well when he came on. He didn't look way better or anything, but. I think you'd get much more out of Xavier than you would Fletcher Baker. He just doesn't... I've written in my notes here, he does not look... <laughs> Fletcher Baker is not him. <laughs> so that's that's sort of my uh, my take on that. Um, but yeah, we'll get on to um, Nathan Cleary here because he was just... He was on, on another planet, man. I mean, he scored 10 points, pretty much had a hand in all... I think he had a hand in 28 of their points. He had 106 running metres... Five post contact, one line break, three line break assists, three try assists, three tackle breaks. That is so insane. And I was sort of saying this. One thing that really um, sort of impressed me with Cleary is I don't, I don't like. You can, he doesn't think he's awesome, and he's constantly. He looks. I love players that look at their flaws in the games over their positives, and he. Not looks at, but just, you know, he's aware of them. And, you know, he sort of said, I'm not a great ball player. I was watching podcasts with him in the off-season. He's like, oh, man, I'm way off on my ball playing, blah, blah, blah. And he's ball playing in this game. I wish I could play it, like you know what I mean? But I'll get a strike on YouTube. But it's just that double under... Like, it looks so simple, but the way Penrith play, this is, this is so scary for every other team. This is so scary for other team because... If he's if he gets starts ball playing like Cody Walker with the polish on his kicking game, with his running game, with his strong defense, we might be looking at the greatest player that ever lived. And I, I don't say that lightly. Like it, we we might be witnessing the greatest player that's ever laced him up. It's so scary. And that just that deception and the way Penrith plays. So they sort of they drop the ball off a lot to players run lines like in in lines and. Um, the way he disguised the ball, hid the ball, and you have to buy it. Like he made Ezra Man look stupid, and like I said, man, it's scary. And what's scary about this for the rest of the the comp is, if healthy, obviously, 
Like to me, their attack looks. They're attacking this game, the game before, look better than it ever has. Like the the deception, the ball playing, everything like that, looked better than I've seen Penrith ever. Like they normally win games off their defence and just grind teams into the ground, jag a couple tries late to make the scoreboard look a bit more flattering than it sort of is. And then, um, I mean, they've won a lot of finals games by less than four points, which is pretty nuts. So um, if they start blowing teams off the paddock and like this and get to pull. Nathan Cleary off with 15 minutes to go. You can rest him up so he's not blowing hammies and stuff and doing all that sort of stuff. It's it's, it's scary, man. It's so so scary. Like we, they're not totally polished and perfect yet. It's still only round three. There's still plenty of work to do. But to me, they look, to me, Penrith look better than they have over the last three years. They won the comp. And that is just petrifying for every if you're a team a fan of another team. Now I saw another thing as well about Penrith's blockers, how Nate, um, Mitch Kenny was sort of passing the ball from dummy half and then running towards Nathan just to, to give him more time. It's just smart, just smart. And look what it does on the other end because the other team can't run blockers. Edwards, 309 metres, 103 post contact. Isaac Tungle, 154, 50 post contact, two line breaks. Jesus Christ. Tor or I mean, Tony May had a relatively quiet game. He only had 70 metres. I actually really enjoyed his matchup with um, Stags, though. That was nice. And um, my mate actually said when we were watching it, he said, um, I feel like T- Tiny could be the player Stags, we thought Stags was going to be. You know how we all think Stags is awesome, but, like, he could be better? I feel like Tiny's sort of going to live up to that. Um, sort of. Well, that's what my mate said, and I was like, yeah, that's sort of... He does have a bit of that about him sort of thing. So, absolutely crazy. Um, but these numbers are just insane, man. But, I mean, it's not looking good for the Broncos over the next month. I mean, they've got... Um, I thought Selwyn Cobbo was really nice when he went back to fullback. I've got to give Selwyn a wrap. I think he's been substantially better than last year. To, to be honest, just straight up. So, when Broncos miss those players, right, I was like, the thing, if you miss players, that's fine. Like... They lose players over the off-season, that's fine. But your current players have to play as good, if not better. And role players have to step up into those positions and not be as good as the guys that left, but at least hold your own. Uh, to be honest, I think... Well, it's a small sample size. Reese looks just as nice, I guess. But to me, Selwyn does look better than last year. And that's that's awesome, man. Ezra, to me, looked a little quiet. He made a little break, but just a, just a little quiet. Not a, not a whole heap on for him. Um, and Paddy Carrigan's obviously always holding his own, 167 metres, 60 post contact. But a um, little worried for him over the next month or two. Um, with those big boys out, I just really hope that um, he doesn't turn into a Cam Murray from the... Josh, Josh Jackson from the Bulldogs a few years ago. Boyd Cordner, guys that are just... They're just those, you know, those blue-collar beasts but their team's sucking and you're just getting smashed in the middle. When you see ball court and they pretty much have to retire early because of it, same as Josh Jackson. I know that's not going to happen here, but you know what I mean? It can take a lot out of you. And you look at Cam, um, Cam Murray now and he just looks defeated all the time because he's just he's pulling his weight and no one else is. So hopefully that doesn't happen to Paddy over the next five to six, seven weeks as long as these guys are sort of out. Um, but yeah, Billy Walters has to step up. Um, Jordan Ricky as well. I mean, yeah, it's... Uh, not not great, but look, Penrith completed at 87. I mean, look, 77 isn't actually that bad for the Broncos if you have Reese Walsh to lace up a couple tries for you um, sort of thing. And that, look, they did get pretty pumped in the middle, um, 1,982 metres to 1,589. However, again, just remember, their backs did a lot of that work. Um, I mean, 200 of these post-contact metres. That's right, 200 of those post-contact metres were from Dylan Edwards and Brian Tor alone. Some teams only get 200 post-contact metres in a game. <laughs> Don't let that sink in for a second. Absolutely ridiculous. Seven line breaks to four. But yeah, they really did get pumped. 54 metres, average set to 39. 39's not horrendous, but when you allow 53, it is. Um, like, when you think about it, you only everyone kicks on the fifth tackle and you, you start 10 metres apart. <laughs> How the hell are you making 50 metres a set? It's pretty impressive. Obviously, kick returns help, but... Won the ruck here, guys. Offloaded like that. This is the other scary thing. And I'm I, I'm trying not to just harp on about how good the Penrith Panthers are because I'm sure everyone's sick of it, but they started offloading real nice. And we're going to see a bit of a theory, um, a theory through this thing. Teams that look real nice this weekend were offloading. 
I feel like the offload. I feel like the offloads are going to make a huge comeback this year. It already sort of has, but Paramount, in this, in, we'll talk about in a minute, pretty much offloaded Manly to death in that middle part of the game. And um, if Penrith start winning contact and finding offloads, like I, guess, like I said, it's just like you add, the, you add it all up, like defence, unstoppable, Nathan Cleary's ball playing goes a new level, and they're offloading, so you have to tackle them more than once. Scary, man. Absolutely scary. Um, good job from the kick defusals for... Um, so, yeah, look, the tackle efficiency... Uh, no, Pan- Panthers are always in and around here. Broncos, 85. Obviously, they're probably up to around 89 if Payne was there. Uh, but, yeah, not eight to nine errors. So Penrith weren't perfect either. Um, the penalties conceded seven to four. I mean, yeah, like I said, Broncos had their chances, but it was really... Um, and I want to give Broncos a big shout out for um, actually not giving it up. That would have been pretty easy to roll over there because what was the score? It was something that nil there for a while, wasn't it? Yeah, they scored in the 55th and 65th minutes. So, but having said that, they went, Nathan Cleary went off around this time and um, they did take the foot off the gas a little bit. But I'm not taking anything away from the Broncos. I thought they were pretty damn good. Um, yeah, so Broncos just have to steady on the ship. I mean. Let's see who they've got the next few rounds because they're going to be at least four weeks without Payne, Reynolds and Reese. So with Broncos have Cowboys, that's going to be tough. Storm, it's going to be tough. Um, Dolphins, I mean, look, not not eat, like if they're at full strength, I'd give it to them in a minute, but not without those guys. And then next one, Broncos have Cam- Canberra, no, rot- no slouches either this year. So... They need to win one of those two if they can, just just to sort of stay in touch. I think, because um, yeah, that's um, that could get ugly real quick. Because they've only won one game. If they go zero and four, that means they'll be one of seven. Oh, that's crazy. That's crazy. Well, all right. Let's move on to the next one, guys. Um, Raiders was. Was a must-win game. Um, I thought it was like this is one of those games. Like there, there was a game today, Storm Knights. It was a low-scoring game, sort of like this too. But it was just hard to watch. This was actually exciting, like a good gritty game. Um, so man in the match for me was DWZ. His carries, I absolutely loved them. Yeah, I've written down here. It was actually an enjoyable game for a low-scoring um, affair. Um, Warriors at the very end of that game were trying to throw this thing, man. They just kept trying to give the Raiders chances. I was like, what are you doing? What are you doing? Um, but just just a quick thought on this, guys. Um, I love Tua Picky, but I really feel like the small player at back's dead. Like, he, I really feel like you need a bigger, stronger guy out the back that can ball play still. Um Unless you're a big, a big offload team and you sort of can zip through the middle, but Tupiki was getting jammed, putting his back held down for a really long time, and um, it's just it just gets you set off to such a bad start. And so I think if CNK is out for a little while, I do I, I want D, uh, RTS to go back to fullback, and um, and who's a Pompey come in if he's healthy to then you're running the same back line. As last year, that got you to a semi-final, and you've got RTS at the back. I just, I do like that better personally. Um, yeah, he's um, Tupi. I love him. It's, it's hard to say, but yeah, it's just unless you're like breaking tackles like Campbell or something, it's, it's very hard as a small man. And I just think he needs to just hit the gym and just at least build his legs up. You look at Reese. Reese is a smaller guy, but he's, he's got wheels, man. He, so he pulls through tackles and. He doesn't get he gets ragged off. If there's two big blokes that get get good contact on him, of course he gets put back. But too big, he's getting jammed back when it was one on one and stuff like that, and um, it really does get your sets off to a bad start. But you know, like he 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 looks nice. He's sharp. Um, who else do I have good here? Oh man, Jordan Rapana was absolutely brilliant in this game. We uh, hit Kotrick. Papaliti's first stint was brilliant. I reckon this was the first game ever. Where I don't give Jason Tarpany like he's usually an eight and a half minimum. I actually thought he was pretty average. Like and, and saying that, like I say it with all due respect, because it's any other 
look, 90% of other props in the game would have taken that performance. But for his lofty standards, I didn't. He didn't quite. Uh, usually, I, I'm used to doing this when Tarpany plays. Like he just carries the ball up. Doesn't he? Doesn't look like much. He's a big, tall guy. But and I just go. He just like he just not shocks me. It's just like it's just like, like just impressive. You just like impressed and just give it. Like he's hard to stop, man. You know, it's uh, he's brilliant, man. But a little quiet from him. AFB was his first stint was brilliant. They got to they got to work something out with him though, because they're substantially, you you know when AFB is not on the park, um, like it's weird too, because it's not like the other guys are playing bad. Like, this is the thing. Maybe AFB is just that good, and it's making the other guys not look as good or something. But, um you know when he's not on the park like you know some games you can be watching you're like oh where's where's uh like last year or like um i don't know if moses the Oda could go off and you're like oh, yeah. oh moses is off. you don't even know you see like spencer take a run and you're like oh spencer's on oh moses must have come off you don't you didn't even notice you know <laughs> sort of thing but you can really notice when um afb is off uh, i thought metcalf was nice johnson looks good he's not quite Standard he was last year, but that was always going to be a stretch. He was a freak. Um, have a look at the team stats here, guys. So Raiders had a little bit more time in possession. And look, 80%. So that means they've completed at 90%, 90%, and 80% to start the, th start the year. That's brilliant, man. Absolutely brilliant. Um, these stats should all be pretty easy. When total runs within a few... Uh, run meters within 100 meters of each other. Um, they actually won the post-contact battle. Six line breaks to four, so very close there. Tackle breaks, 29 to 34. Average set distance, very similar, 40 to 38. And uh, they won the ruck too, so a little bit quicker. 3.37 three second play the balls and six offloads as well. To Like I said, Warriors none. Like I said, if you've got a, if you've got a sharp little sharp little guy like Tua Picky, like, I, 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 to bring him into the game, like I'd be like, like, AFB wins a contact every time. I'd just be telling Tua Picky just to, to shadow him. If he wins a contact, spins, give it to Tua Picky, then shh, through the middle, you know, like like Turbo does it, and he's massive, you know. Like imagine what a little guy with fleet feet like he him could do. Jesus Christ! But yeah, it's it's weird seeing the Warriors not offload once in a game. I remember when I started watching footy, they were the offload kings. And look at this tackle efficiency from both teams. Shout out to the Warriors and the Raiders, ninety percent, ninety two percent. That's absolutely brilliant. Um, thirteen errors to nine. Um, but yeah, no, it's it's this was like I said, it was a yeah, Warriors, about four of these areas were in the last five minutes. <laughs> like, I'm not going to lie. Maybe five of them. Like, this, it was actually a relatively high-quality game, um, to be fair. But, yes, yeah, it was cracking, cracking game for a low-scoring game. It wasn't, like, overly exciting. But um, And shout-out to the Warriors, well, the fans at Christchurch, too, getting out. Uh, DWZ, like I said, 178 metres. 71, 71 post contact, line break, line break assist, try assist, and six tackle breaks. That's so good, man. Um, who else we got? RTS, 200 metres, 71 post contact, line break, and a try. Adam Fenua Blake, 159, 54, one line break and a try, two tackle breaks. Absolutely brilliant, man. Um, Raiders weren't, didn't like, they didn't, the stats don't really jump off a whole heap, like individual stats. Um, but yeah, well, Jordan Rapana, 205. It was good. He looked a little dodgy under the high ball, but he just, um, he just, yeah, he just, he just catches them. He just catches them. Two hundred five meters, fifty five post contact, line break, line break assist, try assist, eight tackle breaks. Jesus, how's many? Oh, not many stats in right on this side. <laughs> Tobacco, one hundred and thirty five, sixty nine, one line break, two line break assist, one try assist. Damn, whoever had him in his super coach would have been pumped, pumped. Uh, just quietly too, James. Um, oh, I nearly called him James Fogarty. Um, Jesus Christ, his kicking game. He, I'm not saying he is this, but his kicking game has been top three, I reckon, in the comp this year. It's it's, it's up there, man. It's up there. Like, is it? I'll, I'll I'll give it to you if you don't say top three, top five for sure. And I, that doesn't mean it's going to go the whole year, or he's a top three kicker in the comp. I'm just getting these three rounds. Jesus Christ, I cannot believe Whiten was taking so many kicks in this team last year when he had this dude just thumping the ball around. He, I reckon his bomb's close to bloody Burton's, eh? It's real close, real, real close. Titans, Bulldogs. I'm not going to talk too much about the Titans other than it's just so horrible to see Tino go down. Oh, hang on. We missed the Rabbits Roosters. 
Um, Mr. Rabbit's Roosters. Um, all right, so... Oh, man of the match, Teddy. We had tries to Dom Young, Sam Walker for two, Joey Manu, Connor Watson, Joey Manu again, Tedesco, Tedesco, wow. Three doubles. Absolute hiding. Um, I just... I'm just going to use the eye test here. I'm not even talking stat. Bunnies look slow, overweight, don't care. Latrell's effort. Latrell never looks like he tries real hard. He's one of those athletes who does things that doesn't look... I know a lot of people give him trash and say, you know, he doesn't try. He tries. Trust me, he tries. He's one of those guys that does make things look easy. And he has a switch that flips when there's something on. But he tries. Um, maybe not as hard as he possibly could all the time, obviously. But he dead set looked so uninterested in this game. Even when stuff... He, he got hit hard once. I can't remember who by... Terrell May or something, or White maybe. Hit. He's just hit face. Like, no, like, get off me. No, he just, like, completely submitted. Like, just completely submitted. And, um, not a good sign if you're a Bunnies fan, man. It was, um, it was, like, they were slow. Like, line speed was horrible. Like, every, like this is, I did a video on this, I think. People are like, oh, they just need to tighten up this. They need to, oh, Jack Whiten's going to help. They just look like a bad football team at the moment. And they're not a bad football team. I'm just saying at the moment, they just, they look like a team that would finish 11th. They look like a team that would beat some teams and not not, not others. And then probably finish the year like, you know, nine wins and 14 losses. Something, you know, something like that. Um, yeah, I thought the trail was... Look very uninterested. Jack Whiten was just like whoever thought Jack Whiten was going to come in and solve all their problems. I don't know, man. Like I didn't. He was okay, but that's like Canberra fans. If you're watching, you're like you know, like you know he he's not out here winning Canberra games all the time. You know, like he's. You know, he's a big moment player, he's that origin player, he's that tough, gritty guy, he's that mega effort, he's all that, but he was never going to come here and change anything here. And again, an aging player in a slow team, like, and I, I, don't, I hate using this word and I don't want to because he's one of my favourite players, and I'm not saying this is the, the case, but Cody Walker looks washed. I'm not saying he is. It could just be he had three bad games, but he to me, to me he looks washed. Like, everything looks off to me. Like, his defence looked poor, his... Communication looked bad. His body language looked bad. He's. I want to see. Like, everyone's like, "Oh, Cody Walk." You know, he gets so. I want to see him fired up. It shows me he cares. Like he was, he was doing bad stuff, and he wasn't even swearing at himself. He was just putting his head down. I don't like that. Eh? I want to see Cody Walker mad. I, I don't know. He, he. I'm just saying. I'm not saying he is, but Cody Walker looks washed. He looks like a player that has used to be good. That, that, that's that's what he looks like to me at the moment. So, I hope I'm wrong. Um, but Fords were terrible. Um, Totola, like I was giving him raps all off season. He looks okay, but nothing crazy. And just the errors, man. And Kepi comes on, and like he, he, he's the last Ford they needed. They needed someone like Spencer Lino. I know obviously they didn't get him, but like a big slow. Like don't get me wrong, he hits like a Mack truck. He actually has some pretty nice carries, but just errors, bro. Like the last thing Buddy needs. Bunnies needed this season was a Ford, Ford that gives penalties and makes errors. Like, and Kepi, if if you're a Manly fan watching this, you know, you know, bro. Like he, he he was good. He come off the bench at Manly and he, on limited minutes, and he was good for a penalty in error every game. I'm like, what do you think's going to happen when he starts playing forty? Like it's multiple, and he, it is. Um, Cam Murray can't fold him, absolute beast. But yeah, it's just not looking good. Um, and look. Roosters look far, sharp, athletic, the complete opposite. Far, sharp, athletic, slick, youth, mix, a nice mix of youth mixed in with vets. Um, I'm f I know Sam Walker got knocked out, but he's okay now. Um, who else? Who else? Someone. I, I think Lindsay. This is a funny thing. Lindsay Collins pulled up, grabbed his hammy, limped off the field, but then I didn't see anything about it. He got exchanged off straight away. It didn't look like a. Like a it looked like he blew a hammy. And they, the commentary actually said he's blown a hammy. Um, but I haven't seen anything on NRL Physio. I haven't seen it. I don't know, maybe it's fine, but it didn't look good at the time. Um, but yeah, uh, Tiramaya was great. It's good to see Angus Crichton on there again. And this, 
This uh, Nafana White, is that how you say his name? Nafana White? Yeah. <sighs> nice. Like, this is crazy. Like, like White or Tyrrell May isn't going to be in this team in, 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 what, six weeks' time with Spencer coming back. They've been killing it. Crazy. All right, we'll go through the team stats. This is going to be ugly. 86% to 70. Um, actually did okay in the metres, batters considering, but 1,600 metres to 1,500 metres. Uh, post contacts, 610 to 514. I mean, they had four line breaks. I mean, Rabido scrambled really well to seven line breaks with the Roosters. Average set distance, very similar. Play the ball speeds, very similar. It's just errors. 11 offloads to eight. Yeah, it was just, it's, it's bizarre. Like, these stats should be way more lopsided, but they're just not. 36 missed tackles. I guess maybe because they're, I guess if you just blast past someone, it doesn't count as a missed tackle and if you don't get a hand on them. But, yeah, wow. Yeah. Um, not good. 15 errors, I mean. Jesus Christ. Five penalties each. Uh, I'm not going to rub it in any more Bunnies fans. I'm just going to talk about the the, the Roosters. Um, yeah, Teddy was absolutely brilliant. 170 run metres, 59 post-contact. Uh, line break, two... I hate when it does this. Um, two line break assist, one try assist, eight tackle breaks. Dom Young. Dom Young was on one last night, man. Dom Young was 170. What's this? Three line breaks, two try assists, 12 tackle breaks, bro. Are you kidding me, man? Wow, that's impressive. Absolutely impressive. But no, really good from the really good from the Roosters. But yeah, not much. Else. That was an absolute hiding with no lubricant. It wasn't consensual. That was rough. Um Onto the doggies at Belmore, absolutely giving the Titans a hiding. Obviously, the big thing to come out of this was if you're a Titans fan, Tino doing his ACL, wishing him well. Jesus Christ, man, that's uh, absolutely horrible. Um, you know, it's a uh, sort of what I was talking about with Carrigan. You know, like just does it all, just puts a team on his back, even when everyone else is turning up, and then he gets this. Absolutely horrible, man, but. I'm not going to talk about the Titans just because, whatever. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna give the Bulldogs a wrap. Bulldogs are great, man. Like they were they were really good. Um, took them a little while to get moving. They look like the first 15, 20 minutes. I was like, yeah, they're like you know, they're not fifteen. No, probably ten to twelve minutes. I was like, oh, they look alright. Nothing crazy. I'll, I'll go glass half empty first. <clears throat> and I don't want to take any shine off the Bulldogs. The Titans were awful. Partly because the Bulldogs are really good, like kick hours, you know, kick pressure and all that sort of stuff. But Titans were awful. I don't think they beat any other team in the comp by more than 30. That's my glass half empty, but my glass half full, um, they were great. They, they played direct. I like how they played both sides. Like, I was really worried they were sort of going to, and that's, I picked kick out to score a try in this one. That they were like they've got all that strike on the edge and they were just going to go left, 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 left. No man, they mix it up real nice. They went left sometimes, they went right sometimes. I think their first two or three tries were actually on the right. I think it was Wilson or maybe that one got taken off. Yeah, Wilson's one got taken off him, and then um, oh that's right because I missed I missed the overs because there was two bloody tries disallowed in this. Um, they went right, so Wilson didn't get the try, but then um, yeah then. Viliami, who else got one? Someone else. Jacob Preston. Yeah, that's right, Preston got one on the right there. It was I was spewing too because I I was tossing up a much straight any time try score, Preston or kick out, Preston kick out. And I've been picking the wrong side in my any time try scorers. Like in the Roosters game, I picked because Jack White was back, I picked Tupo to get a try, because I'm like, oh, they're gonna go left because Jackie's on that side, they won't want to attack that side as much. I don't think Tupo touched the ball and attack. I just, and then in this game, they were going right and Preston scored a try and I'm going, oh, I've done it again. Two games back to back where I've picked the wrong side where the ball's going to go. But they just mix it up nice. Uh, yeah, it was, it was real good. Uh, Vili Amikikau, honestly, one of the best games he's played. Everyone was saying it was best game, one of the best games as a Bulldog. I think it was one of the best games he's played. Um, Jake Carraz was an absolute handful, so it was kind of It's was nice. Um and yeah, it was just it was just really good. Who else was good? Burton was okay. Crichton was quiet. Um, a lot of action on the other side. 
Um, another glass half empty. Sorry, I'd love to be given the Bulldogs. I don't know about Drew Hutchison. Like, the, the, the problem with me, he's, he is, I didn't realise how slow he is. There was a few gaps that were left in this game, and I was like, ah, oh, Sexton would have punched through that for sure. He's, he's moves more like a hooker or something, you know what I mean? He's not lightning fast. Bit of a bigger body, you know. Um, yeah, but it's just, uh, yeah, I don't know. Like, he, I actually love Drew Hutchison as a player. I think he's like one of the best, you know, like sort of utility guys out there. But there was just a few, there was a few wide open gaps, 10, 20 meters out, where I was like, oh, if that was Cleary, Moses, you know, like those top lightning quick sort of halves, or even like Walker and Ilias, they would have straight through. Um, Drew got sort of swallowed up and jammed from both sides. Uh, but good. Um, Max King was good. Reed Marnie had his best game in a Bulldogs jersey, in my opinion. Liam Knight was actually held his own. The thing was, their forward pack wasn't good at all individually. They were just hunted in packs. Oh, sorry, kick out was brilliant. Um, just, just making sure there's two or three blokes in every tackle. I mean, this forward pack on paper is substantially better. I mean, you got Queensland front row, Queensland front row, Payne Haas's little brother. I mean, Femmel's okay, but Joloff's, you know, like I was actually pretty impressed with him last year. He was very good. Premiership winning lock, you know, Broncos best bench player last year. You know, it's um, Aaron Clark was actually pretty damn good. But they just hunted in packs and just really shut down, shut shut them down. So it was good. That's what you got to do when you're a small team, man. I mean, you had bloody Curran coming on and playing in the middle. Uh, 80% completion, not perfect, but good enough. Seven to, I haven't seen the Bulldogs win a, a, a metres battle like this in four years. 1,700 to 1,200, absolutely brilliant. Eight line breaks to one, 42 to 23 tackle breaks. I reckon Karaz had about 15 of those. <laughs> um, yeah, it was it was nuts. Nine offloads, nice amount, nice amount. Don't want to throw around too much, but... Um, and then look at that tackle efficiency from the doggies. I, I, I can tell you now, doggies have not tackled at 91% this year or last year. So that's that's really, really nice. So good on them. Um, who, who sort of stood out here? Um, yeah, Connor Tracy was real nice. 231 metres, 57 post contact and a line break. Jacob Karaz was good. He's 122 metres, 39 post contact, one line break. Two line break assists, 11 tackle breaks. I said 15 of them. You got 11. I was, I was exaggerating and I wasn't far off. Wow. And uh, damn, man, Blake Wills can play footy too, bro. He can play footy too. He's nice. Um, I'd still like to see Reed Marnie get a break and Kurt Mann come on, but hey, we'll see how we go. We'll see how we go. But now look, positive signs. Dragons, Cowboys. This was a weird game, man. Oh, man of the match for me, and that one was kick out as well. Um, oh, and that was Bulldogs' first time holding a team to nil since 1996. Well, wow. um, Cow Cowboys, Dogs, I got man of the match, Drinky. Um, but such a weird game. Such a weird game. It was a swing game. It was a, it was a game of runs. It was like, like streaks, like teams went hot and cold. Um, this could have been a completely different game if Mariner holds onto that ball, dropped it cold in the in goal. Should have been a try. Um, so, Cowboys come out, score a try in four minutes to a lungy bang, and I'm like, Jesus Christ, they might be on here. And then, and then it went what? Zach Lomax, Terrell Sloan, and Flanagan, bang, 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 all within what nine minutes, and then they dropped the ball just over the line. So the McIntyre try was what came just after it, 24 minutes. So they dropped the ball in what the 20th minute, 21st minute. And then Cowboys score another try and then just go try, 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 try. Like, wow. It, it could have been a completely different game. Yeah. Cowboys, again, if... Look, they're on top of the ladder. They haven't been the best team. They, they, they're on top of the ladder. They're the, only, they're the only undefeated team. They haven't been the best team. I think the Roosters have been better, Raiders have been better, Penrith have been better, Seagulls have been better, pa Parramatta have been better, Melbourne have been better. They, they, you get what I'm saying? Like they, they haven't been the best team. The patches, they've looked real, real nice. Um, the patches, they've looked real, real nice. Um, but this this is the problem. Like Those little lapses I was just talking about, if you do that against Penrith, they will just... 
you'll never get another chance. If you do that against Melbourne, full strength Melbourne, you just do those a few dumb things, lapses in concentration, they'll swallow you. Um, so like like Cowboys good, but they're they're to me like the actually even though they're coming first and the only team undefeated, yeah they're. But having said that, geez, they look nice when they're on. Like those patches I'm talking about, they're probably the been the best patches. <laughs> they're the best patches team I've seen. They they, they look. Scott Drinkwater is right to left ball, left to which, hang which one? Which way did he go this? Way? Left to right, right to left, both. He's just so nice. Like, it gets my willy wobbling. It really does. It's so nice, bro. Like, oh, Val Holmes was not Like, like I said, their patches, when they're going, Jesus Christ, they look unstoppable. If they can, I mean, they're never going to be able to play that for 80, but if they can just play for that for, like, 65 instead of, like, 35, they're going to, they're going to, um, they're going to destroy. So, yeah, Cowboys crazy now one thing i was thinking about this that actually might is he on the list he's not cowboys they were bad good blah blah blah. but i was sort of thinking like they brought james maloney into their coaching staff and james maloney's one of those guys and i was like he's perfect for the cowboys if you don't know who james maloney was he bounced all over the nrl and everywhere he went he like either made a grand final or won a goal he was so good at, and he had a knack for, he will throw two cutout balls that get intercepts, and you're like, come on, man, what the hell are you doing? And then they'll run the same shape, and he'll just fire it again and just hit the most crispiest cutout ball and hit the winger on the chest and score a try, and then he'll go the other side and do it again. He did, he had he, they used to call him the goldfish, like he had no short term memory. He didn't care if he got an intercept, like he just kept doing it. It sort of reminded me of the thing, like they just kept. They'll do something so tr- crap and then just, who cares? We'll get it back, you know? Like, so I don't know if that's a bit of Jimmy Maloney running off, <laughs> rubbing off on them. But, um, yeah, man, it was it was, just, it was just funny. I actually forgot. I, I remembered that he was coaching them and stuff. But, you know, you're not thinking about who the assistant coaches are when you're thinking footy and stuff like that. And just during the game, it flashed up the box and I saw Jimmy Maloney in there. And I'm like, this is such a Jimmy Maloney game. Like, yeah, so... Man, and he's going to do wonders for this team, man. I'm telling you, like, especially Deard and bah, what a coach to get. Like, I mean, Townsend's not going to learn anything. He's on on the way out. But having a 23-year-old gun half with Jimmy Maloney as his mentor, <whistles> scary, scary times if you're not a Cowboys fan. They could uh, do something scary here. But, um, look, definitely didn't look as good with Lukey not on. Finny Fuaki was good. He scored a try, but... I don't know. Uh, bench was a little weak. Neem was brilliant. McIntyre was actually good. He scored a try too. But, you know, not not crazy, crazy. But, no, nah, I, really, I really liked what the Cowboys did. Um, massive improvement from the week before. Let's keep it positive, this video. Massive improvement from the week before. And they can go. They could, they could finish top four. They're off to a great start. They look great. West Tigers, Sharkies. Shout out to the West Tigers. Shout out to the West Tigers. Tries to Isaiah Papali'i, Alex, how do you say? Safarth? Olam Bulla Bulla. This was just... Like, okay, so West Tigers beat Penrith last year, right? Penrith were really bad in that game. It was wet, it was sloppy, passes were going to ground, it was horrible. They scrapped a win. This game, they just beat them. They just, they just beat a really good team. And I was so impressed, man. Happy Chorus here. If he doesn't play Origin this year, man, you, you're kidding. Like, he is just dead set. Got a sore back from carrying this team all of last year, and he comes out with a bout of gastro, scores like 120 on Supercoach. Absolutely just single-handedly... Like, he had help, but single-handedly like uplifted this team to a better standard. He is incredible, man. He is absolutely incredible. And I said this in my TikTok post video... Everyone has, like, Harry Grant on this massive level. Like, he's so much better than every other hooker. I don't have him that far ahead, if at all, of Appy. Appy is amazing, man. I absolutely love him. He's he's absolutely, absolutely brilliant. And if we go to the team stats here, we're talking about offloads. Um, they were offloading at will. If you don't have the best roster, offloading is the best way to crack a good team. Like, 
this is the funny thing. Um, Parramatta, 2022, 2021, they've always had this reputation like of beating good teams, losing to bad ones. It was cause they th- you're coming up against Penrith, which they have the best record of in the, over the last five years. What, what are you going to try and sit there and play like Penrith and beat them? You think you're going to go to Penrith, run the same same style of play and beat them? Like, you're not beating them, man. Parramatta, throw the ball around. Chance their arm a little bit. Fucking toss the ball out the back. Second phase. Keep it going. Shift to the edges. We've got space. Swing it back the other way. Another offload. It's It works, man. And I was really... I love the way they played. And you could tell Benji was actually getting messages out there. Because I think they got nine of these offloads in the first half. They got out. They were ahead, I believe. Yeah, they were ahead. And they did put their offload back into the into the shed. They still offloaded a bit. So five or six, maybe. And they just they still played footy, but they did they didn't chant they weren't chanting their arms anymore. They're like, yep, we can defend this lead, and just you know, just keep playing footy, but not need to do it in a stupid risky way. And I, I loved what they did, man. It was it was just great. Like nothing but positive things to say. They just went out there and you know, like trounced. Like to me, this was more impressive than the Bulldogs win, just because Sharkies played. Everyone's like Sharkies played crap, bro. They didn't. They didn't, man. They they threw the ball around a bit at the end and crapped out, but decent meters, great post contact. Ruck was actually faster. Average set distance was similar. Like these, they offloaded. Like the where were the errors? Tackle efficiency wasn't great, but Tigers wasn't a whole heap better. And missed tackles were the same. Like there wasn't ineffective tackles. A few more, but oh, okay. The, this looks worse than it was. A lot of these errors were at the end of the game when they there was scoreboard pressure, um, which I hate when that happens because people go, oh, they just played crap. No, they didn't, bro. But Sharks played really good for 60 minutes. I don't, I don't want them to take away anything from the how good the um, Tigers' performance was. It was a really good performance. Sharkies, in, especially in the first half, played really good, man. So shout out to the Sharkies. Shout out to the Sharkies. Um, shout, out to, shout out to the Sharkies. Shout out to the Doggies. Uh, <laughs> Oh, it's been a long weekend, my bros. It's been a long weekend, my bros. <laughs> oh, man. Shout out to the Tigers, man. Getting it done. Absolutely brilliant. Oh, we'll have a look at some... Let's have a look at some team stats. Some player stats. We've got to, we haven't been able to give players shout outs on the Tigers for ages. Dream Buller. 135 metres. Felt like more. 135 post contact. 29... No, it's 100... What? 135 metres... Uh, 29 post contact, five tackle breaks, long break. Appy Coruscant, man, just absolute freak. 76 running meters from hooker. Uh, two line breaks, two line, uh, two line break assists, two try assists, three tackle breaks. It's just, just so damn good. Um, thought Bateman was brilliant. I thought Olam was awesome. He suits his team perfectly, man. He's exactly what they needed. They didn't need that tall, rangy, new, athletic. You know, like a like a Tomoko or anything like that. They need a jukebox. They need just someone who's going to defend hard, tackle hard, give get nice carries to get him out of trouble because Charlie Staines isn't a big body. Um, Junior Topo is, but Bull, you don't want Buller taking heavy hit ups. You know, Justin Olam's another front rower. He's going to and if if you want to throw a cutout ball, we dig into the line on his edge. Good luck. I'm I'm telling you, man. I'm telling you, bro. And like there's. Teams go to other sides when he's out there sometimes because the halves don't want to dig into the line there. He'll, he'll rearrange your ribs. He'll rearrange your ribs. Um, yeah, absolutely brilliant from the Tigers. I'm su- super happy for him, eh? Super happy for him. My pop, my pop who passed this year, would have been absolutely proud of that one, man. He loved the uh, loved the old West Tigers. Para Eels. Now, let's just get the trash out of the way. Everyone was sucking on... Everyone was sucking on social media about, oh, that obstruction wasn't an obstruction. And we'll talk about the Bulldogs one last week as well. I had a thousand bucks on the Manly Seagulls to win this game. No one wanted me to. No one wanted to win this game more than me. Like I would have won two, two and a half grand. <laughs> it's an obstruction, bro. This is a thing, right? So we'll go back to Vili Army Kickouts one last week. Player runs into the into the ref and then it denies him a fair chance of getting the thing. The rule is. If the ref obstructs the play, you have to play the play again. The rule isn't if the ref obstructs a player, 
it, it's, it stops unless it's Viliami kick out five metres out to, to score a try against a half. That's not the rules. It doesn't matter if he was probably going to score. The same as this one. Would have Turbo got through anyway? Of course he would have. I'm not saying he would have and wouldn't have. He would have. That's that try. I think it was a forward pass anyway. So I don't know what he's talking about. But of course he would have, man. Like of course he would have scored anyway. It's the rules. Like people suck about people suck about the rule. Well, people suck about the rules and they don't go their way. But it's just. It's the it's the rules. We can't start making stuff up and go, oh yeah, but Vili Army probably would have scored there. Oh, but Turbo probably would. We don't know. We see talking about the Vili Army one again. We see halves stop big front rowers to score tries all the time, all the time. So it's a stupid rule. Like it's if Jakey, I love him. He's one of my favorite players, bro. If you don't want an obstruction call, don't stop in the line. If you don't, if if Jake runs through or doesn't run into the line, it's a try. There would be no obstruction. So Jake knows the rules. Jake knows. Jake after this game would. I guarantee you, like all you Manly fans, everyone watching, I promise you, when Jake goes back and watches that, he would have gone. Oh, I shouldn't have stopped in the line. I guarantee you, he will because he knows he was wrong. <laughs> Jake, of course, he blown up at the time. Oh, I didn't obstruct him. Blah blah blah. They're gonna watch tape this week and they're gonna show that. And he's Jake is gonna go. Damn, I shouldn't have stopped in the line. Simple. It's an easy way to fix it. Can you imagine if we started bringing in rules like, all right, this is an obstruction, but unless it's turbo, because turbo would, would have scored anyway. It's so stupid. This is literally the dumbest thing I've ever heard. Oh, AFB's massive. Like, if there's an obstruction, like, it doesn't matter because you can't stop AFB close. What? He gets tackled close alone all the time. Come on, bros. Let's use our heads. There's rules, black and white. Let's go. Um... And this, this too, the Manly fans too. Like, and I love Manly. Again, I had you to win, my bros. I'm not picking on you. <laughs> Do you want to know the reason lost the game? How about this? 72% completion rate. You no, know, how about, you know, like, the, where was the other one? 13 errors, nine penalties conceded. And, and to be fair, another thing that I thought was actually really good, look at this for Parramatta. Parramatta's... Parramatta were getting held down way longer than Manly were. Parramatta got two penalties holding players down, which, again, cool if they're penalties, but, pe like, obviously, look, there's an, the proof's in the pudding. Obviously, Parramatta were getting held down longer. Look, like, the, the numbers don't lie, bros. Like, Parramatta were getting held down longer and didn't have penalties. And But anyway, that's that's what I'm saying. It was, it was errors. It was Parramatta capitalising. It was Parramatta completing 34 or 41 sets. Control in the game. That's what won it for him, man. Um, I th having said that, absolutely no gloss off. Manly are legit. Manly are legit. Like they're going to roll a lot of teams, and I see. I, I, I don't see them finishing lower than fifth, sixth at worst. They look really, really good. Um, run meters fourteen hundred to thirteen hundred. Really good defense from both teams. Look at these restricted meters. Absolutely brilliant. Uh, from both teams. It was funny. Someone goes, oh, they should have played defense. I'm like, they both, both their attack efficiencies were in the high 80s and they were literally stopping, like, no no one could run for over 40 meters in a set. Um, that's pretty good defense from both bros, man. <laughs> like, um, but yeah, let's let's go to some team stats. That's not much going on there. Um, Turbo was absolutely incredible. I had him as a try scorer, which was absolutely awesome. Um, 175 meters, 41 post contact, three line break assists. No, sorry, three. Oh, yeah, three line break assists, one try assist, five tackle breaks. I thought that was 12. I thought Paseca had 12 tackle breaks. I was like, what? Um, Paseca was good, nothing crazy. Luke Brooks was nice. Jackson Paula was okay. Everyone was just okay. Uh, I thought Parramatta did a really good job of locking down Ola Kawatu, and Ben Travojevic was a little off. And um, yeah, but it was it was solid, man. It was still a solid game. Uh, Dylan Brown was really good, really good. Um, Mitchell Moses, was that 44 metres? 44 metres run, his groin's clearly still bothering, but line break, two line break assists, three try assists, two tackle breaks. And, man, I really liked, just, just quietly, just, just look at this, the, the, the optics of the game. I liked how much the Dylan Brown and Mitch Moses split the ball. I feel like Mitch plays too much. Like, he has the ball too much sometimes. I think he should kick all the time because he's 
damn near the best kicker in the comp. But I love to me if there's not much on, I'd rather Dylan Brown with the ball, just because he's more likely to create something out of nothing. Mitch Moses is awesome when like. You know, you do a half shift, maybe a, a second row, bang, gets a quick play the ball, he gets on the ground, and he scoops it up out of dummy half and goes short side. I'll take Mitchell Moses over just about anyone. Him, Nico Hines, you know, over just about anyone. Um, that That's what Mitch Moses is a good one. When, when there's something on, you want Mitch Moses with the ball in your hand. But when there's not much on, I want Dill Brown running. I want Dill Brown running, man. He's so nice on his feet. Um, real good. But Manly, don't stress. You're going to be back, man. You guys were elite. And... I think Parramatta might be for real as well, man. I really do. They were just, they they looked so good. Like last week against Penrith, they had a clear gaping hole on their left edge. Their left edge? Yeah, their left edge. I'm really bad with left and rights because offense, defense and all that sort of stuff. So if I do get those wrong guys, I do apologize. Um, I know what I'm saying in my head. It just doesn't come out right. Um, and again, and they're in the game with, with Penrith. <coughs> This one, they're again playing the hottest team in the comp, essentially, one of them, who just rolled, Manly just rolled the Roosters last week. That shows how good they've been playing. They've got Morgan Harper and Blaze Tuolungi on debut. Morgan Harper's never played footy, uh, never played wing. Tuolungi's never played first grade. Manly are tearing them apart on that edge, and they win. Like, that's crazy, man. Death by a million offloads. Let's see how many offloads they actually got. 16. 16 to 5. There was a point where Seagulls could not stop the ball. But they they there was almost an offload in every every tackle there for, for three or four sets. It was it was insane. They could not stop it. And the thing was too, they were doing nice stuff off it. They weren't they weren't just like running four under a further four meters and getting tackled, but they also weren't just shifting it like crazy and throw, playing hot potato. It was like shift to an edge. Not edge, edge, like second row edge. Hit on second row, get a nice quick play of the ball, onto the next, bang, another offload, shift to another. It was just, it was real nice. It was nice. It was such a good game to watch this game. I, I had a thousand bucks on Manly, sort of wanted Parra to win, but didn't really care. You know, I tipped tipped the Eagles as well. I was sort of like, oh man, I don't really care who wins. I just want a good game. And man, I was not disappointed. Eh? It was... It was real, real nice. And shout out to Blaze Tuolungi for getting a try and debut. I was so nervous for the poor bloke because he was getting violated in that first half by, by Manly. Like They just ripped him to shreds on that edge there for a little while. It was nasty. And um, like they were making a line break whenever they felt like it. It was, it was absolutely crazy. And um, for him to, to him to smash over the top of jo- like big Jake, uh, Tom Travojevic and score a try, man... He's 19 now. When he's like 21, 22, and he's got his man body, Jesus Christ, he's going to be scary, absolutely scary. Um, let's move on to the Eagles. No, I don't want to spend much time on this game, guys, because it was an absolute bludger. Um, like I said, close, low-scoring games. I mean, they they can be good, like like we spoke about the Warriors and Canberra, but this one just was. I was just fighting the urge to not just play on my phone the whole time. I really was. It was an absolute bludger. Um, Ponga had spurts. It was okay. So did Pappenhausen. But everyone everyone just had little spurts where they were good. I tell you what, Wishart was great. I had him in my super coach team on the bench. He got a 92. I was stoked with that. Pezzett booted the ball out on the full. I think Gamble was awful. Gagai was great. Gagai was great. Gamble was crap. Even Cogger booted the ball out on the full and... Safidi so brothers were pretty good. Leo Thompson, I don't know. I just I thought I was expecting more from him this year. Look, put it this way: the Knights are half the team they were at the end of last year. They really are. I know they got the win here, but missing they're missing about a third of their salary cap. You know what I'm saying? Like I know you have to you have to turn up, but they're missing a third of their salary cap. Like they're. You know, Jesus Christ. Um, yeah, I was expecting. You know, I was expecting the Knights to do a little better than this. I did tip them, but they just there was no point. Where I was like, oh yeah, Knights are back. They're rolling. I'm just slowly pulling, pulling Knights players out of my Super Coach team. Eh? <laughs> Pong is next. You're about to go, buddy. Even though you had an alright one this one. Uh, but yeah, it was okay, man. It was it was just a bit of a bludger. The last game of the weekend can be pretty hard to watch if you, if it's not a good game. 
I mean, this is the other thing too. Melbourne weren't great, like sixty nine percent completion. You know, they won the forward battle here. Post contact meters about the same. For like they they had less line breaks in the Melbourne Storm. It's crazy, man. Tackle breaks, they lost that. They won the average set distance, but they won the ruck. Five offloads to six. Just not much to talk about, man. Oh, wow, 90% tackle efficiency. That's pretty good. Maybe maybe that's why they didn't score many points. <laughs> uh, Kai Paul Pierce looks good. He got his arm free a few times. Ponga has to follow him around, I reckon. Um, obviously, I'm not going to tell Ponga what to do on a footy field, but, you know, I, I just noticed him. He had his arm free multiple times. Probably a little green to be um, throwing offloads in games. So <laughs> pretty new to the NRL. Uh, who we got here? No, nothing crazy. Uh, Caelan Pong, 193 metres, eight tackle breaks, line break, tri assist. Not too bad, I Twice and gamble. I mean, his actual numbers aren't that bad, but I just, just to the, it's just more the optics. It just didn't look right, man. I think Hastings and Cogger should be there. Tyson Gamble is the perfect number 14. He's the perfect number 14. Um, I don't know. He can play. He can play anywhere, man. He can play anywhere. Um, Adam Elliott looked a bit off tonight, um, but yeah, it was just it was just a bit of a bludger of a game to be fair. But yeah, like I said, it was man, it's scary for Melbourne too, man. We're not too sure what's going on with Munster. Like, yeah, I heard this thing about Johnsy today, and they're saying he's saying this could finish you if you don't get this right. Groins are a funny one, eh? Like Groins, like Moses just played through a game with it and. And, and Munster can't run. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it's, it's they're wild. I remember when I had them, because that was the only injury I ever had as a, as athlete, well, athlete, <laughs> as a sports enthusiast, um, was groin. And, man, it was, it'd come and go. Sometimes it would come back two or three times in the same game. Sometimes it'd be gone for six months and come back. It was bizarre. It used to give me the shits. But honestly, man, I was like, there was times where I was like, bro, if I wasn't on a footy field, I would be bawling my eyes out right now. This pain's so bad. But obviously, I can't, can't cry in front of the boys. Like, <laughs> that's how bad it was sometimes. Um, I thought Bloor looked nice. I'm surprised he hasn't had a run. Oh, he played 73 minutes. What a beast. Um, Paps was great, man. And how was that? Dangerous contact here. Uh, War, I had Warbrick and bloody Xavier Coates for two or more tries in this. They didn't get close to scoring a try. Absolute bludger. Uh, Trent Liero, 205 metres. Jesus, Jesus. Yeah, absolutely crazy. But, yeah, that's it. That's it, lads. We're done, son. All right, let's have a look at next weekend's games, eh? Ooh. Some more shoes. Nah. I think I've got them all. <laughs> Most dunks, anyway. I've yeah, got the blues, I've got the reds, I've got the greys. I don't have them. That looks all right. Um, oh, man, this is crazy. Roosters versus Panthers. <sighs> Kiri's free to play. We'll have to wait and see. That is a crazy price for the Roosters. Two sixty-two. That is crazy. And then the Panthers one forty-nine. Absolutely nuts. If Fisher Harris was in the team, I'd be like, yeah, fair, fair cop. But he's not. It's crazy. Bunnies must like this. This is it. If if Bunnies lose this game, they're done. They're absolutely done. It's just, and I'm not saying they're not going to win any more games, but they've got a hard next three or four games. They they have to win this game. And I feel a little sorry for the doggies here because they're going to come up a, a desperate team. Like, literally, there's players playing for their jobs. There's a coach playing for his job. I uh, will coach him for his job. No stern will be no stone will be unturned in this game, in this preparation. And <sighs> Doggies, Jesus. Um, yeah, it's going to be a tough one. Broncos versus the Cows. First versus 14. Son, doesn't matter. It's going to be a good game. Oh, Broncos, a lot of players out. This could be tough. This could get ugly. Could get ugly. Um, Dragon Sea Eagles, Jesus Christ, Manly are short in this one. Titans Dolphins, Warriors Knights. Just trying to think who it. it's in New Zealand. Okay, then we have Sharkies versus the Raiders, Parramatta versus the West Tigers. 
New Parramatta, six versus ninth. Melbourne Storm with the bye. Hopefully they can get Munster and or Jerome Hughes will be back next week as well. Well, the week after as well. Um, yeah, so man, absolutely crazy. Great. This is going to be a good round of footy. What what could be the best round here? So this is going to be a cracker. This is going to be a good game. The first three games are crackers, absolute crackers. And then I just love watching the Wars play. So that'll be pretty good. Sharks Raiders both coming off losses. And man, to be fair, like I'm really excited to see if the Tigers to see if if that was a bounce, like a, a fluke or was it a you know a real game. Like the the bookies clearly think it was a fluke from the Tigers, but. Um, yeah, but I mean, that's probably discredited in Parramatta a little bit. They've been absolutely brilliant. So, um, yeah, oh, what a game. What a round of footy that's going to be. I absolutely cannot wait for that. Um, so, yeah, stay tuned, guys. I'll drop my preview video on the Wednesday, Wednesday morning early. I usually record it Tuesday night and chuck it up Wednesday morning real early, um, like 6 a.m. I usually just schedule it for the next day real early because I'm usually doing stuff during the day and I don't sort of... I don't want to post my video at like 11 a.m. So I just thought I'd post it first thing in the morning. I've got a lot of friends that watch it, um, like they, you know, on their way or listen to it on the way to work or whatever. So, so I do that, guys, instead of posting it sort of really late Tuesday. But that's it, lads. Thank you all so much for watching, guys, and I'll see you on the next one.